Lakeland Currents, your public affairs program for North Central Minnesota. Closed captioning is made possible by Bemidji Regional Airport, serving the region with daily flights to Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. More information available at BemidjiAirport.org. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ray Gildow, and you're watching Lakeland Currents. Today, we're going to be talking about economic development and growth, and it takes a village. That's the term I guess I shouldn't be using, but it takes a village to have any community growing and developing whether that's a community of 50,000 or a community of 500. It takes people cooperating together as a team to make it work. And I've got a group here today from Staples who uh, have been doing some pretty exciting things and they're gonna introduce themselves and then we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the things that are happening at Staples. Uh, Melissa, let's start with you. Sure, I'm Melissa Lyman. I'm the Economic Development Director for the City of Staples. And how long have you been in that role? I've been at the City of Staples for eight years and in economic development for about 12 years. Okay, and Ron? So uh, I'm uh, the mayor of Staples. And it's Ron Murray. Ron Murray, <laughs> Staples mayor. Relatively new at this job. I got elected uh, with the last cycle, so I started in January. So I'm on, what, month nine or 10. And um, I was a city councilman for the City of Staples for eight years prior to that. And you are a physical therapist? Physical for therapist and work at Lakewood Health System over in Staples, yeah. And Gerald? Uh, Gerald Nelson, city administrator. And how long have you been in that role? Uh, as city administrator, uh, going back to 2015 and then uh, working for the city doing community development from 2008 and prior to that in a contract position going back to 94. And a lot of people would ask all of you, What's wrong with you? Why are you doing this? <laughs> I mean, these are jobs typically that are challenging. Uh, to get everybody on the same page in a community is not easy. Um, chamber directors, for example, are, you know, look at some of the communities around. They go through lots of chamber directors. It's a challenging job, but a very rewarding one, I think. Okay. And um, could you just talk a little bit about how you work together as a team? Well, I think, you know, with the, just within the city of Staples, obviously, we have uh, uh, a council and mayor uh, that we report to and different department heads that have different areas of expertise. But, you know, to, to go to what you were talking about, uh, uh, requiring a broader community effort, we've got a lot of different sectors within the community that, that work together. I think of uh, an organization that we have called LEAP, which is basically a networking group uh, made up of uh, LEAP, L-E-A-P, Leap Leadership, Leadership Engagement, Leap. Advocacy, and Positiveness. Positivity, yep. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, not only public sector uh, people, but also private business uh, owners and managers that participate in that. And uh, keeps well everybody informed mm -hmm. of, of what's going on in the community and, you know, try to be a positive voice in the community. I know the uh, the coronavirus really affected the uh, Census uh, Bureau, didn't it? When they were trying to figure out what the growth was uh -huh, in yeah. communities. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a sense, is Staples growing? Is it maintaining? Where, where do you think Staples is at? Well, I, I don't agree with the 2020 census numbers uh, for the city of Staples. Uh, the amount of housing growth that we had during that 10 year period of time, uh, knowing that all of that housing is full uh, and yet our population basically remained uh, flat uh, from 2000 or from 2010 to 2020. Uh, I think it's up a little bit. State demographer's office shows it a little bit higher in their annual estimates. But yeah, I think I think uh, COVID presented a real challenge um, to the Census Bureau in getting accurate numbers. Just as a person who lives in Staples, when I, I drive around, I look at all the new apartment buildings that have mm -hmm. been built. Uh, they're all full. Yeah. Yes. And yes. Uh, you know, we were talking a little bit about assisted living. They're all full. Mm -hmm. So you wonder if we aren't growing and we just haven't seen those numbers officially yet. And I'm sure that's probably a case for almost all of our communities in, in our region, uh, that there's probably some growth there that we just didn't realize. And the economy is doing really well considering the challenges that we're facing in the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, go ahead, Melissa. I was gonna say, I mean, with all of our housing developments, we had four. Um, one was a phase two of an original housing, but within that 10 year, seven year period even, there is over 145 
to you, yeah, excuse me, 145 units of, uh, of um, multifamily housing going on that are full. And at the time we did a housing study and we were less than 2% vacancy rate. And we are still sitting at less than a 2% vacancy rate. So that's showing that, again, as you stated, it is full, um, more people are coming. And um, are, so the 2020 census, I mean, I think it's always a guess anyways, um, but statewide and probably beyond, as you were stating, I've heard the same thing from other communities, especially smaller communities that they, uh, they struggled with that, the results of the census as well. Where are these people coming from and what are they doing when they come to Staples and, and move into these apartments and the houses? Um, it's speculation because they can't <laughs> give me the actual data, <laughs> although I ask and ask and ask. <laughs> but speculation is, you know, we have a lot of jobs in Staples. Um, I remember when I first came to the area, I was told that this is a bedroom community. It is not. Um, we have just as many people traveling to Staples as we have pretty much populated here. I'd have to pull the numbers again, so I don't want to give exact uh, numbers, but you know, we almost double in size Monday through Friday um, based on the number of jobs and people that commute really? into Staples for work. Wow, um, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a very interesting little piece of data that I, I'm like, wow, well, I think everybody's confused then. <laughs> this isn't quite true. Um, and you know, our, our mix of our economy. I mean, we have um, high paying jobs, we have professional services. Um, so between Sourcewell, you know, of course, other government agencies, but then um, we have healthcare, and then we also have a good mix of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So we have um, jobs and people commute to us for those jobs. And I think that's really a part of it is if people are looking to relocate into an area, um, why not go to where there's a place to work and quality of life to live in? It's, uh, it's kind of interesting that uh, for many years, Staples didn't grow. And one of the things, Gerald, you brought up uh, in our pre-show here was <clears throat> the highway change really impacted. Uh, for people who don't know what that means, could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, well, you know, Staples is kind of at the crossroads of Highway 10 and 210. And uh, back in the late 60s, early 70s, you know, when MnDOT was doing the four-lane bypasses all the way along Highway 10, uh, they identified a corridor uh, kind of looping up uh, towards the north end of Staples for a bypass. And that project was always on the future list, uh, and it was never getting done. But I think the impact that that had on the, the Highway 10 corridor coming through Staples was uh, one of uncertainty. Uh, the highway is going to move. Why would I uh, make a substantial investment in a business that caters to highway traffic? And um, and that went on for uh, for decades. Uh, we had businesses that built along the proposed North Bypass corridor. Um, that uh, never had a highway develop uh, in front of their business. But um, the, you know, I think when in 2007, when the Highway 10, four lane Highway 10 through Staples was completed, now there was certainty. Everybody knew where the highway was going to be, uh, and we've seen a lot of development along uh, that Highway 10 corridor. Um, and it's no accident that a lot of our current development um, that's very visible is happening along that corridor as well with the plaza, uh, the Accenture Clinic, uh, the railroad maintenance shops that are going up there, um, had Timberlake Hotel, New Casey's, you know, a lot of that type of development. Ernie's Grocery Store, you know, was built there after the highway moved. So. Um, I, I think that, in my mind, is kind of what triggered the momentum that we are still enjoying today. I know as I drive through town, and I live four miles out of town, but I'm amazed at all the places that there's development going on right now. It's, it's really amazing. Melissa, what are some of the things that's happening in Staples? So um, as far as the development that is going on, I think Gerald mentioned it. I can dig in a little bit deeper. The Lakewood Plaza is happening right along Highway 10. Um, and what is the Lakewood Plaza? So that, for people yes. that don't know. So the Lakewood Plaza is um, a development by Lakewood Health System. However, they partnered with the Twin Cities Orthopedics. So TCO, they're building a space there for some orthopedic um, space, physical therapy, physical therapy space, yep. yeah. 
Um, and then they're actually, in addition to, you know, just building what the TCO building was, um, they, are, they added three additional uh, commercial units. And so one of them is filled, uh, a pharmacy will be going there. And then uh, there's two additional commercial units that are available for new development. And then up on top, instead of stopping there, they decided to take it to the next level and then add 11 apartment building or apartments on the second floor um, to add some additional housing in our community, which is great. Um, anything else that should be added? Uh, Ron, as well as being the mayor, is part of Lakewood Health System, so in case I missed anything crucial on that one. It's just going to, the uh, TCO part of the plaza is going to sort of uh, focus on uh, performance type stuff for athletics. Um, it's going to be kind of a special niche, I think. That's what they're going to be shooting for mostly there. Um, will there be a couple docs that are actually going to be working out of there or will they be coming through as needed? Uh, Lisa might be able to, Lisa Virga might be able to speak more to that as a CEO, but I, I don't believe there's going to be any physician interaction over there. I think it's going to be solely rehab oh, okay. focused. So they would go to that particular spot for the performance rehab and things okay. like that. Yeah. And it's a, it's a beautiful facility. Yeah. Oh, it it really is. And I think that uh, I heard that some of the apartments on the upper floor would be for visiting specialists. Yes, yes. I mean, of course, you know, they, they've struggled with finding um, places for their visiting, what is it, specialists or even just traveling doctors and nurses and other staff. Mm -hmm. um, so some of those will be reserved, but some of those um, will be open depending on what the demand is that they see there. But still, having a place for those individuals is just as critical. Mm -hmm. um, and then Essential Health, they are building a clinic in town right now as well, uh, just off of Highway 10, but it could be just on Highway 10. You can see it directly from there. That actually had a really nice component of some blight cleanup with an old motel there that, you know, didn't have the, the best appearance to be so visible from Highway 10. So it's going to be very nice to have a new development there, another healthcare option for our residents and surrounding residents. Um, and then... You know, the school, the school is doing a lot of improvements as yeah, well. Yeah, just talk a little bit about what the school's doing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to see when you're driving by all the, the structure. Oh, wow. the <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of things going on, yeah. 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 So um, well, what's happening at the school? You know, they have, they just completed a project or almost completely completed um, the elementary improvements. So unfortunately, our students at the elementary school hadn't had a cafeteria in many I don't think ever. ever. Um, so it was always traveled over from the high school, from their, their commercial kitchen down to the elementary. And um, when my kids went to the elementary school, you know, it's cold. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's, it's safe, but it's, it's not as good as if they could cook it in house for them. And then they didn't really have a good place to eat either. I mean, that some of them I think were taking it back to their classrooms. Other ones were using a multi-purpose room. Uh, to bring their food down mm. to. So it was just really a, not a great setup, especially for elementary kids. So they were able to take the existing, what they were using as a gym, which as I understand it wasn't officially a gym to start with, <laughs> um, and uh, turn that into a cafeteria so they can you know, have um, fresh, healthy, good quality food and a location to um, eat that food as well as one of the additions that they made is a new gym for those elementary students. So now they're able to access their new gym. They had to go, I think it was what, 18 months without um, indoor gym space. Is the new gym available now? The new gym is available yeah. now, yeah. So yep. there's a floor in it and everything? Yep, yep. yep. Wow. Yeah. It's a competition um, gym, so it's yeah. it's a full high ceiling is with there spectators. Are, are there spectator mm -hmm. seating? Yeah. Bleachers. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Wow. And then, then, then how about at the uh, middle at school the or the high middle school? Middle high school, yeah. So that is actually a collaboration between Lakewood Health System, I think First International Bank. I believe so. Yeah. Um, and then the school district um, in the city had some say, but we didn't put the money in, so I'm going to not put us down as the money people. Uh, but they are building what is called the nest, and that is kind of filling a gap between what our community center offers and what the school has, and then adding to what the school is offering as well. So with that, there'll be a walking track inside. Um, I forget the square footage of the building, but there'll be a walking track on the second floor so that people can, it's also a spectator gym, I believe, um, or space. And then I think what there's, there's gyms, there's uh, locker rooms, there's uh, work, the weightlifting, I think. Weight room, high school I think. weight room yeah. stuff will be moved in. So the, uh, the, like for the basketball games, for example, is that still going to be in the old gym or will they, the games be in the, the new facility when it's done? 
I think it depends, but I don't really know. Okay. Um, I don't know either. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. And I don't even know if they know for sure what still, they just know that they progress. absolutely needed more space and yeah. that they were missing some of these things. Yeah. So. And I, I think the other component of the of the middle school high school project was uh, air quality, yes. you know, lots of HVAC uh, type of work being done over there as well. So, so the school's would, yeah. making a lot of improvements. To their so facilities. was any of that school planning done in cooperation with you folks? Or was that more of an independent process? A mix, I think. A mix? Yeah. I would let Gerald kind of take that question as um, the planning yeah. and zoning. Well, we, and we've been, you know, we've been involved with the school for, you know, more from a building code um, type of standpoint uh, related to the facilities. I think the, you know, the Nest project and kind of that expansion of the, of the South Gym uh, has been more Lakewood and the school um, you know, working on um, developing that facility. That's been talked about for a number of years. That's, a, that's really amazing. Yeah. And we're using, we're going to do some work on uh, some of the side streets mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. that are going to improve just that whole, the, the, the look of the street, the quality of the street, and then some of the homes along there. And the school is going to also uh, piggyback in there and do some infrastructure, right, at the same time. Yeah, they, they've done a fair amount of that on the okay. west side, the parking yeah. And, yeah. and that type of stuff. But we'll be we'll be doing uh, underground infrastructure, curb gutter, sidewalk, uh, kind of. Is that all expected that. to be done then, like next spring? Is that twenty-five? Yeah, we're we're looking at that as a twenty twenty-four project as part of a bigger uh, you know project that we're uh, trying to figure out funding for right now. But we'll have uh, projects uh, on the west side of the school in twenty twenty-four. And then uh, Fourth Street, which is a county state aid highway, we're working with Todd County, uh, and basically Fourth Street all the way to Warner will be reconstructed. Oh wow! And some of that, some of that reconstruction will also help that school because they'll mm -hmm. they'll be putting in additional and uh, upgrading sidewalks that'll get people from uh, parts of Staples into that school for walking and things too. You know yeah. that we don't have now. Yeah, it's kind of if you if you drive up Fourth Street, you see the sidewalks are a little disjointed. You know, you got to cross over the street. You know, yeah. we're going to do continuous sidewalks all the way along there. What else you got there, Melissa, on your list? Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> actually, one of the the big areas that we've heard a lot of um, talk about over the many years, and especially now that Highway 10 is being developed. Um, we started focusing on downtown revitalization as well. And so we were fortunate to receive a grant from Blandon Foundation for $100,000 that's all being invested into our downtown right now as well. So we have community groups that are working on that. There's two of them that have taken our downtown revitalization plan, which is more so a brainstorm, but it had a large group of community members participate in what they want it to look like. Um, and then we were able to get funding to implement that plan on the at least especially on the placemaking side so uh, we currently have a mural that just went up we're working on um, new banners along highway 10 some lighting options in the downtown area to brighten it up and beautify it um, i think the uh, unique one would be metal banners throughout the downtown um, if we can afford it we'll do 84 metal banners that represent have different images on them that represent our community mm. and then um, wayfinding it, signage it done locally and will be done locally, yeah. We have a local um, metal uh, metal craft, precision metal craft. I'll call him out by name. A fabricator. <laughs> a fabricator. <laughs> um, but he has a wonderful laser cutting machine that I know nothing about except that it can produce exactly what it is I'm looking for. So that's pretty cool to me. Yeah. Um, and so uh, there's a bunch of that kind of stuff happening in addition to these large developments. And I don't want to overlook our downtown. Our downtown, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, has been overlooked a little bit. And as Gerald mentioned, that could have a lot to do with that swap of Highway 10 and getting comfort with how it's going to be now. But now we're... We have a large community group that's really focused on them. And so they're they're leading the way and telling us what, what those that $100,000 should be spent on. So Is that part of the Tower Pizza mural? That yeah. is the Tower Pizza oh, okay. mural. Yep. Yeah, that was funded through the Blandon Foundation. That's very nice. Yeah. yeah very nice. And and what else you got? I know you're not done. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, we have lots of projects coming up. So we just got funded for small cities. 
um, through the state. Uh, so we were funded 948,750. Um, but the city also put 125K as a community match into that. And so we're gonna be able to, starting this coming spring, invest over a million dollars into um, revitalization, redevelopment um, efforts in primarily on single family homes. So we have enough funding to do approximately 20 single family homes. Really? Yeah. Well, yep. Where I think will they be? Um, anywhere in the in the town, um, so long as they qualify, they have to be 80% of the um, wage and then also need the improvements. So primarily what they want to focus on is weatherization, um, abatement, you know, lead abatement or asbestos abatement, that kind of stuff. Um, and then we'll be able to do five or approximately five, depending on the project dollar amounts, um, uh, single family rental properties and then additional five commercial properties so i know the ives family who built the, the hotel mm. are also doing a housing project could you just briefly talk about that i would love to but i'm actually going to let gerald and ron okay. take that yeah. one go for, go for it <laughs> yeah uh, uh ives uh, owners of the timberlake hotel they they have a, a background in manufactured home communities uh, and uh are, are have a lot of expertise in that and they acquired a uh, a park in Staples that needed some love um, to uh, be generous. And, it was mostly uh, a trailer park, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. Mobile, uh, old mobile homes mm -hmm. uh, that were in there that they removed and uh, ba basically have come in and have four uh, homes that are available for sale uh, within those parks uh, that got placed last week and uh, should be uh, basically ready to go here within about uh, two or three weeks. Wow. So. And to comment on that, those are for sale. Yep. So. And they're gonna add more, aren't they, eventually? Yeah, yeah, I believe phase one, they're looking at uh, 14 uh, different lots. Oh, wow. There. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We, uh, you know, you spoke at the beginning about how progress and things don't happen without a collaborative effort. and. The Ives family have been a blessing to Staples as they far really as have. what they've done for us and, the, and, their, and their, their commitment to our community. And you know, what Gerald was speaking about, you know, just speaks clearly of that commitment they have for us. They, they, I've worked with them a number of times and they're wonderful people to work with. Um, if you were to share with other communities that are sort of in a holding pattern, what would be some of the key things that they should be doing to get started doing new things. What could you share? You know, I think from sit the city government standpoint, you know, to have uh, to have the the city and the city council um, be advocates uh, for that growth and um, you know, not to become an obstacle. And I know in some cities, you know, everybody is is very concerned about well, we don't want to appear to give anything away. You know, we got to look out for um, you know, for the taxpayers, but um, we've we've been um, the beneficiaries of having a pretty good, stable council that uh, really wants to look at how we can grow, what can we do to help uh, that growth along, and that comes from a uh, you know from a staffing standpoint and a commitment to you know maintain an ongoing economic development effort over many many years in Staples. And uh, and then I think just the you know the partnerships within the community um, that uh, that we've developed over the years and other agencies and organizations. Um, Have you worked much with the uh, university extension? Um, yeah, a lot of information that we get from them. Uh, they're great with the data. They actually um, did our downtown revitalization plan. Um, you know, there's been other just conversations of potential funding, but then a lot of just more partnering and in leading and guiding us on how to do certain things. You don't come in and know exactly what to do, it, not as an economic developer, because everything is different with every single project or mm -hmm. every th single topic. And so learning the data and understanding, um, you know, what it is that you need and where to put, I think going back to your original question is, you know, what, do you, what is it that is most critical to your community? Um, how can you make that happen? And then, um, Meaning, how can you make that happen? Do you, do you need housing? Do a housing study so you can prove to developers or people who are interested in, in building in your community or in a, that area even, you're going to be the first one because then they already know that you need this. Um, same with uh, if you're looking for industrial businesses or some jobs to bring to your community, 
Uh, one of the things we have done is we have 60 acres of shovel-ready land through the state of Minnesota. Um, we took the time, did the investment, did the studies. Now um, we're looking for people to build on it. But in the meantime, because of that recognition, I want to say that's how we filled all of our industrial mm -hmm. buildings. We have no buildings available for new business. So we have 60 acres available to them. I guess wow. So kind of prepping your community to be able to say, why wouldn't you come to us? We're already ready for you. Um, and kind of that front end works so it simplifies things on the back end for them. I know there's a, you know, you went through the highway process going through the community. Pequot Lakes has done the same thing. I think Wadena is going to be dealing with some highway issues going through there uh, for, we're just about out of time. But yep. if there's someone in f uh, an area that's going to see that kind of development, who should they contact from Staples to, to give them some, some hints and some, some guidance? I'm more than happy. I've had many conversations. Call me, Melissa, EDA at the City of Staples. Um, okay. I am be always good resource. been more than happy to work with other communities if they're either a they um, not sure what it is they need or what or if they um, just want to brainstorm with me. Um, I've always been more than happy to work with others, okay. um, more on a friendly type basis. Sure. I have gone and done presentations for different groups on how to bring housing into your community or how to do certain different things that we've excelled at. Um, so more than happy to help anybody who would well, like I've some. I've lived in Staples over 40 years and I've never seen the growth and the development that's going on right now. It's, it is really amazing. So mm -hmm. I think you and all the folks you work with are be, to be commended. Uh, it's pretty exciting what's happening there. So thanks for coming on board. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we're out of time. Uh, but again, if somebody wants to contact you, Melissa, they can get a hold of you. And I know, and Gerald, Gerald, you've got a phone number too. <laughs> I do. And um, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, you probably uh, stay away until the night because that's when you work outside your other <laughs> Yeah, <day>. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks, thanks for again. having us. Thanks for jumping on board with thanks us. We appreciate us. it. You've been watching Lakeland Currents. I'm Ray Gildow. So long until next time. <laughs>